hope to show that most modern secret societies, and especially those that practice degrees of initiation, and that is the key, are really one society with one purpose. You may call them whatever you wish. The Order of the Quest, the Jason Society, the Roshania, the Kabbalah, the Knights Templar, the Knights of Malta, the Knights of Columbus, the Jesuit, the Mason, the ancient and mystical order of Rosai Crusai, the Illuminati, the Nazi Party, the Communist Party, the executive members of the Council on Foreign Relations, the Group, the Brotherhood of the Dragon, the Rosicrucians, the Royal Institute of International Affairs, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberg Group, the Open Friendly Secret Society of the Vatican, the Russell Trust, the Skull and Bow, the Scroll and Key, the Order. They are all the same and all work toward the same ultimate goal, a new world order. Those who will not use their brains are no better off than those who have no brain. You must accept that you have been cattle and the ultimate consequence of being cattle, which is slavery or you must prepare to fight, and if necessary, die to preserve your God-given right to freedom. History is replete with whispers of secret societies, accounts of elders or priests who guarded the forbidden knowledge of ancient people, prominent men meeting in secret who directed the course of civilization are recorded in the writings of all people. The oldest is the Brotherhood of the Snake, also called the Brotherhood of the Dragon, and it still exists under many different names. The Brotherhood of the Snake is devoted to guarding the secrets of the ages and to the recognition of Lucifer as the one and only true God. If you do not believe in God, Lucifer, or Satan, you must understand that there are great masses of people who do. I do not believe in racism. But millions do, and their beliefs and actions based upon those beliefs will affect me. It is clear that religion has always played a significant role in the course of these organizations. Communication with a higher source, often divine, is a familiar claim in all but a few. The secrets of these groups are thought to be so profound that only a chosen, well-educated few are able to understand and use them. These men use their special knowledge for the benefit of all mankind. At least, that is what they claim. But how are we to know, since their knowledge and actions have been secret? Fortunately, some of it has become public knowledge. Secret societies mirror many facets of ordinary life. There is always an exclusivity of membership, with the resultant importance attached to being or becoming a member. This is found in all human endeavors, even those which are not secret, such as football teams or country clubs. This exclusivity of membership is actually one of the secret society's most powerful weapons. There is the use of signs, passwords, and other tools. These have always performed valuable functions in man's organizations everywhere. The stated reason almost always different from the real reason for the society's existence is important. It can be anything, but is usually fraternal and is found in all pressure groups wherever people congregate. The most potent tool of any secret society is the ritual and myth surrounding initiation. These special binding ceremonies have very deep meaning for the participants. Initiation performs several functions which make up the heart and soul of any true secret society. Like boot camp, the initiation into the armed forces, important aspects of human thought that are universally compelling are merged to train and maintain the efforts of a group of people to operate in a certain direction. Initiation bonds the members together in mysticism, Neophytes gain knowledge of a secret, giving them special status. The ancient meaning of neophyte is planted anew or reborn. 
A higher initiation is, in reality, a promotion inspiring loyalty and the desire to move up to the next rung. The goals of the society are reinforced, causing the initiated to act toward those goals in everyday life. That brings about a change in the political and social action of the member. The change is always in the best interest of the goals of the leaders of the secret society. The leaders are called adepts. This can best be illustrated by the soldier trained to follow orders without thinking. The result is often the wounding or death of the soldier for the realization of the commander's goal, which may or may not be good for the overall community. Initiation is a means of rewarding ambitious men who can be trusted. You will notice that the higher the degree of initiation, the fewer the members who possess the degree. This is not because the other members are not ambitious, but because a process of very careful selection is being conducted. A point is reached where no effort is good enough without a pull up by the higher members. Most members never proceed beyond this point and never learn the real secret purpose of the group. The frozen member from that point on serves only as a part of the political power base as indeed he has always done. You may have guessed by now that initiation is a way to determine who can and cannot be trusted. A method of deciding exactly who is to become an adept may be decided during initiation by asking the candidate to spit upon the Christian cross. If the candidate refuses, the members congratulate him and tell him, you have made the right choice as a true adept would never do such a terrible thing. The newly initiated might find it disconcerting, however, that he or she never advances any higher. If instead the candidate spits upon the cross, he or she has demonstrated a knowledge of one of the mysteries and soon will find him or herself a candidate for the next higher level. The mystery is that religion is but a tool to control the masses. Knowledge or wisdom is their only God, through which man himself will become God. Man's desire to be one of the elect is something that no power on earth has been able to lessen, let alone destroy. It is one of the secrets of secret society. It is what gives them a political base and lots of clout. Members often vote the same and give each other preference in daily business, legal, and social activity. It is the deepest desire of many to be able to say, I belong to the elect. The first secret that one must know to even begin to understand the mysteries is that their members believe that there are but few truly mature minds in the world. They believe that those minds belong exclusively to them. The philosophy that follows is the classic secret society view of humanity. When a person of strong intellect is confronted with a problem which calls for the use of reasoning faculties, they keep their poise and attempt to reach a solution by garnering facts bearing upon the question. On the other hand, those who are immature when confronted by the same problem are overwhelmed. While the former may be said to be qualified to solve the mystery of their own destiny, the latter must be led like a bunch of animals and taught in the simplest language. Like sheep, they are totally dependent upon the shepherd. The able intellect is taught the mysteries and the esoteric spiritual truths. The masses are taught the literal, exoteric interpretations. While the masses worship the five senses, the select few observe recognizing in the gulf between them the symbolic concretions of great abstract truth. The elect are given knowledge of the mysteries and are illumined and are thus known as the Illuminati or the Illuminated One, the guardians of the secrets of the ages. 
three early secret societies that can be directly connected to a modern descendant are the cults of Roshania, Mithras, and their counterpart, the Builder. They have many things in common with the Freemasons of today, as well as with many other branches of the Illuminati. For instance, common to the Brotherhood are the symbolic rebirth into a new life without going through the portal of death during initiation, reference to the lion and the grip of the lion's paw in the Master Mason's degree. The three degrees, which is the same as the ancient Masonic rites before the many other degrees were added, the latter of seven rungs, men only, and the all-seeing eye. Of special interest is the powerful society in Afghanistan in ancient times called the Roshania, Illuminated One. There are actually references to this mystical cult going back through history to the House of Wisdom at Cairo. The major tenets of this cult were the abolition of private property, the elimination of religion, the elimination of nation states, the belief that illumination emanated from the supreme being who desired a class of perfect men and women to carry out the organization and direction of the world, belief in a plan to reshape the social system of the world by first taking control of individual countries one by one, and the belief that after reaching the fourth degree, one could communicate directly with the unknown supervisors who had imparted knowledge to initiates throughout the ages. Wise men will again recognize the Brotherhood. Can you hear the echo of the Nazi party, the Communist party, the extreme right and the extreme left? The important fact to remember is that the leaders of both the right and the left are a small hardcore of men who have been and still are Illuminists or members of the Brotherhood. They may have been or may be members of the Christian or Jewish religion, but that is only to further their own ends. They are and always have been Luciferian and internationalist. They give allegiance to no particular nation, although they have used, on occasion, nationalism to further their causes. Their only concern is to gain greater economic and political power. The ultimate objective of the leaders of both groups is identical. They are determined to win for themselves undisputed control of the wealth, natural resources, and manpower of the entire planet. They intend to turn the world into their conception of a Luciferian totalitarian socialist state. In the process, they will eliminate all Christians, Jews, and atheists. You have just learned one, but only one, of the great mystery. They are all the same, and all work for the same ultimate goal, a new world order. Many of them, however, disagree on exactly who will rule this new world order, and that is what causes them to sometimes pull in opposite directions while nevertheless proceeding toward the same goal. The Trilateral Commission is an elite group of some 300 very prominent business, political, and intellectual decision makers of Western Europe, North America, and Japan. This enterprise is a private agency that works to build up political and economic cooperation among the three regions. Its grand design, which it no longer hides, is a new world order. A key to the danger presented by the Trilateral Commission is its seminal piece, written for them by Harvard professor Samuel P. Huntington in the mid-70s. In the paper, Professor Huntington recommended that democracy and economic development be discarded as outdated ideas. He wrote the following as co-author of the book Crises in Democracy. We have come to recognize that there are potential desirable limits to economic growth. There are also potentially desirable limits to the indefinite extension of political democracy. A government which lacks authority 
will have little ability short of cataclysmic crises to impose on its people the sacrifices which may be necessary. Look at the Council on Foreign Relations. Many members, in fact the majority, never serve on the executive committees. They never go through any initiation of any kind. They are, in fact, the power base and are used to gain a consensus of opinion. The majority are not really members, but are made to feel as if they are. In reality, they are being used and are unwilling or unable to understand. The executive committee is an inner core of intimate associates, members of a secret society called the Order of the Quest, also known as the Jason Society, devoted to a common purpose, the members are an outer circle on whom the inner core acts by personal persuasion, patronage, and social pressure. That is how they bought Henry Kissinger. Rockefeller gave Kissinger a grant of $50,000 in the early 50s, a fortune in those days, and made dear old Henry a member of the CFR. Anyone in the outer circle who does not tow the mark is summarily expelled and the lesson is not lost on those who remain. Do you remember the human desire to be a member of the elect? That is the principle at work. The Council on Foreign Relations has been the foremost flank of America's foreign policy establishment for more than half a century. The Council on Foreign Relations is a private organization of business executives, scholars, and political leaders that studies global problems and plays a key role in developing United States foreign policy. The CFR is one of the most powerful semi-official groups concerned with America's role in international affairs. It is controlled by an elect group of men recruited from the Skull and Bones and the Scroll and Key societies of Harvard and Yale, which are both chapters of a secret branch of the Illuminati known as Chapter 322 of the Order. The members of the Order make up the Executive Committee of the Council on Foreign Relations after undergoing initiation into the Order of the Quest, also known as the Jason Society. The Council on Foreign Relations is an offshoot sister organization to the British Royal Institute of International Affairs. Their goal is a new world order. Although it existed as a dinner club in New York, it did not take on its present power until 1921 when it merged with the Royal Institute of International Affairs and received its financial base from J.P. Morgan, the Carnegie Endowment, the Rockefeller family, and other Wall Street banking interests. The Council on Foreign Relations controls our government. Through the years, its members have infiltrated the entire executive branch, State Department, Justice Department, Central Intelligence Agency, and the top ranks of the military. Every director of the Central Intelligence Agency has been a member of the CFR. Most presidents since Roosevelt have been members. The members of the CFR dominate ownership of the press, and most, if not all, of America's top journalists are members. The CFR does not conform to government policy. The government conforms to CFR policy. I read top secret documents while with naval intelligence that stated that President Eisenhower had appointed six of the executive committee members of the CFR to sit on the panel called Majesty 12, also known as Majority 12 for security reasons. Majesty 12 is the secret group that is supposed to control extraterrestrial information and projects. The document stated that Eisenhower had also appointed six members from the executive branch of government who were also members of the CFR. The total membership of Majesty 12 was 19, including Dr. Edward Teller and the six members from the Jason Scientific Group. Again, whether this is true or disinformation depends solely upon the existence of aliens. 
The CFR is a secret society in that it forbids the taking of notes or the publishing of minutes of its meeting. Any member who divulges the subject or any part of any conversation or talk that took place during a meeting is terminated. The goal of the Council on Foreign Relations is a new world order. Remember, never worship a leader. If you worship a leader, you then no longer have the ability to recognize when you have been deceived. The most powerful secret organization in the world is the Bilderberg Group, organized in 1952 and named after the hotel where its first meeting took place in 1954. The man who organized the Bilderberg Group, Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands, has the power to veto the Vatican's choice of any pope it selects. Prince Bernhard has this veto power because his family, the Habsburgs, are descended from the Roman emperors. Prince Bernhard is the leader of the black family. He claims descent from the house of David and thus can truly say that he is related to Jesus. Prince Bernhard, with the help of the CIA, brought the hidden ruling body of the Illuminati into public knowledge as the Bilderberg Group. This is the official alliance that makes up the world governing body. The core of the organization is three committees made up of 13 members each. Thus the heart of the Bilderberg Group consists of 39 total members of the Illuminati. The three committees are made up exclusively of members of all the different secret groups that make up the Illuminati, the Freemasons, the Vatican, and the Black Nobility. This committee works year-round in offices in Switzerland. It determines who is invited to the annual meeting and what policies and plans will be discussed. Every proposal or plan that has ever been discussed at an annual meeting of the Bilderberg Group has come to pass usually within one or two years following the meeting. The Bilderberg Group is directing the quiet war that is being waged against us. How can they do it? These are the men who really rule the world. Manley P. Hall, 33rd degree Mason, probably the most renowned expert on these subjects, wrote in his book, the secret destiny of America. For more than 3,000 years, secret societies have labored to create the background of knowledge necessary to the establishment of an enlightened democracy among the nations of the world. All have continued, and they still exist, as the order of the quest. Men bound by a secret oath to labor in the cause of world democracy decided that in the American colonies they would plan the roots of a new way of life. The order of the quest was set up in America before the middle of the 17th century. Franklin spoke for the order of the quest, and most of the men who worked with him in the early days of the American Republic were also members. Not only were many of the founders of the United States government Masons, but they received aid from a secret and august body existing in Europe which helped them to establish this country for a particular purpose known only to the initiated few. The members of the Bilderberg Group are the most powerful financiers, industrialists, statesmen, and intellectuals who get together each year for a private conference on world affairs. The meetings provide an informal off-the-record opportunity for international leaders to mingle and are notorious for the cloak of secrecy they are held under. The headquarters office is in The Hague in the Netherlands. The goal of the Bilderberg Group is a one-world totalitarian socialist government and economic system. Take heed as time is running short. You must understand that secrecy is wrong. The very fact that a meeting is secret tells me that something is going on that I would not approve. Do not ever believe that grown men meet on a regular basis just to put on fancy robes, hold candles, and glad hand each other. George Bush, when he was initiated into the Skull and Bones, 
did not lie naked in a coffin with a ribbon tied around his genitalia and yell out the details of all his sexual experiences because it was fun. He had much to gain by accepting initiation into the order, as you can now see. These men meet for important reasons, and their meetings are secret because what goes on during the meetings would not be approved by the community. The very fact that something is secret means there is something to hide. Is the common man really as stupid as the elite seem to believe? If he is, then maybe the average citizen is better off ignorant, being manipulated this way and that whenever the elite deem it necessary. We will discover the answer very quickly when the common man finds that his e-ticket to fantasy land has just expired. I hope I have shown you the role of secret societies and groups within the world power structure. I hope you can see how these groups gain and keep power. You should have some understanding of how operating in secrecy and infiltrating every level of government and vital industry, including the press, the elect manipulate the people and nations of the world toward any direction desired. I hope you caught on to the fact that the secret power structure is toward a totalitarian socialist state or fascism. It is not the Nazis as they were a product of this power structure. It is not the Jews, although some very wealthy Jews are involved. It is not the communists, as they fit the same category as the Nazis. It is not the bankers, but they do play an important role. I also hope that you are beginning to look inside yourself to see if their reality fits. Are you getting the message?